tonight. We're being warned about a tsunami of Omicron cases. But there are causes for optimism as research finds that booster vaccines offer 75% protection against Omicron. And coming up in the sport, it's the decider in the desert. We look ahead to Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton's F1 title showdown in Abu Dhabi. Good evening. Just two weeks to go until Christmas. 2021, that is, because it's beginning to look a lot like last year's. The message from the First Minister today was stark, the language visceral. She said Scotland is facing a tsunami of Omicron infections, with the new variants likely to become the dominant form within days. Here is what the Scottish Government is working to. This bottom curve is the best case scenario. That's the green one there. Cases peaking at just over 1,200 a day. The orange there is the mid-case scenario. And this top curve here, the red one, that is the worst case scenario range and that peaks at 25,000 cases a day by December the 20th. But those are just predictions. There's so much we don't yet know about Omicron and despite the severity of the message today, there were no wholesale restrictions announced. Although Nicola Sturgeon did advise people to think again about Christmas parties and from tomorrow, all household contacts of any COVID case must isolate for 10 days. So lots to take in today, which might have you reeling. So we're going to go through it all with a range of voices, but first with more detail on today's briefing, our political correspondent, Andrew Kerr. Well, we know by now that during the pandemic, one of the central aims has always been to stop the NHS being overwhelmed. Today, the number of people being treated in hospital for COVID actually went down. A new research published in the last few hours suggests booster vaccines are key at preventing catching the new variant at 75% protection against symptomatic COVID. Well, I've been speaking to someone on the front line, Dr Tom Farden, a respiratory consultant at Nine Wells Hospital in Dundee. I asked him for his reaction to today's briefing. Yeah, well, there's a lot to feel gloomy about. And the one thing we all agree on, though, is we need to know more about this new variant. But each day there's more data on its nature and how quickly it spreads. Somebody that's been studying that is John Byrne Murdoch. He's a data expert at the Financial Times. Thanks for your time tonight, John. Um, a lot of people at home may have watched the First Minister's briefing today and although she said she didn't want to scare people, might be feeling quite scared tonight. Um, what's your reading of the data? Now, as we were saying, although no new restrictions are in place, the First Minister is urging people to, in her words, defer Christmas parties. Many have chosen to simply abandon their bookings, leaving some venues looking at hundreds of cancellations. Well, we can speak now to Stephen Gow, who is the general manager at the Chester Hotel um, and joins me now from Aberdeen. Um, Stephen, um, how are you feeling tonight? What's it done to your Christmas bookings? Well, to some of today's other news and the future of a controversial new oil field off the north of Scotland has hit yet another hurdle just a week after our energy giant Shell pulled out of the project. Sicker Point, which owns a 70% stake in the development, says that it's putting its proposed plans on hold. The proposed Campbell oil field sits about 75 miles to the west of Shetland and was originally given UK government approval 20 years ago. Sicker Point claims that over 25 years, the site is capable of producing 170 million barrels of oil, equivalent to about 27 billion litres. The project has become a symbol of the fight between creating offshore energy jobs and protecting the environment. 37 employees of Sicker Point have been told their jobs are safe for now. Our environment correspondent, Kevin Keane, has this. Kevin Keane there and straight to Amy Arns with the sport. Hi Laura, thank you very much. Good evening. It's one of the most highly anticipated Formula One finales in the history of the sport. But will it be Lewis Hamilton or Max Verstappen crown champion in Abu Dhabi on Sunday? For Max, it would be his first world title. For Lewis, it would be a record eighth. And with points level, it's shaping up to be an intense conclusion, as broadcaster Jenny Gow explained earlier. There really is Jenny Gow there to tennis now and Andy Murray has split with longtime coach Jamie Delgado. To football now and the Hibernian squad will feel departing head coach Jack Ross should be with them when they take on Celtic in the League Cup final next week. That's according to defender Lewis Stevenson. Things do change quickly in football as we know and Hibs they're travelling to one of Jack Ross's former team St Mirren this weekend. Good. I have to say I'm looking forward to that F1 showdown. Oh on Sunday. I know. It's can't wait. Exciting. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks <Laura>. <laughs> 
Now, the astronaut Sir Tim Peake has a new mission, not only to inspire the next generation of space explorers, but also to target their parents, showing a passion for technology, science and coding. He spoke to our reporter, Hazel Martin. Sir Tim Peake there. Um, back down to Earth now though, and we have David Farrell here to talk about entertainment. I'm so glad to see you tonight. We need a bit of David Farrell on the sofa. Yeah. Oh, it looks good, but it's Spielberg. It's going to be good, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, you in your job must speak to a lot of famous people, but I mean, Steven Spielberg has got to be right up. Thanks, Laura. Okay, let's see what the weather's got in store. Here's Judith. Good evening. Well, a lovely end to what's been a largely fine day for many parts of the country. We did see some showers in the uh, west. However, they're going to ease as we head through this evening, leaving most places dry, lengthy clear spells or widespread frost forming tonight. One or two showers pushing into Shetland by the end of the night. Cloud thickening up along the west coast with the first signs of tomorrow's rain arriving there as well. Now, with that frost comes a risk of some icy patches. Temperatures widely below freezing tonight, possibly as low as minus four to six through parts of the North East. So a cold, bright start for Eastern Scotland first thing tomorrow. All the while in the West we'll see rain gathering and that weather front pushing in across the country. We'll see pulses of heavy rain as we head through the course of the morning. Now the main body of that rain clears away to the east, becoming confined to the northern hours. Behind it is rather damp, drizzly conditions behind it. Southerly winds picking up. The first signs of something drier and brighter into the western hours before dusk, I think. And we'll start to see milder air pushing in with that rain. But in the east we hang on to colder temperatures. Then on Sunday it's a largely dry start, some early sunshine. We'll see cloud increasing from the south, outbreaks of rain soon moving in behind as well, although the far north stays uh, drier. Temperature wise we're looking at highs around 10 or 11 Celsius. You'll notice it's starting to turn that bit milder. This deepening area of low pressure sailing up towards us as we head through Sunday night, bringing some widespread severe gales across northern Scotland. As things stand, there are warnings in force for overnight Sunday into Monday for those high winds, but these warnings could change. That's your forecast. That's it for tonight. Good night.